Hi, welcome to Patrick's Tech Show. I'm Patrick John. Today we have an Atari VCS. Uh, we're gonna talk about what it is, why I think it's cool, and I'd like to address some negative misconceptions and moot points I heard about it. The Atari VCS is a brand new video game console, and it's also a PC hybrid. As a video game console, it focuses on classic games, new retro inspired games, and independent games of any genre. It has two different types of controllers to play these games on. A modern styled controller and this cool joystick controller that not only moves around, but it twists. Classic Atari games like my personal favorite, Circus Atari, that used to be played on this old paddle controller, can now be played on this new joystick controller with the paddle-like spinning ability. And who knows how game developers could utilize this for exciting gameplay opportunities. The controllers also have cool LED features. On the modern controller, you can always see the battery life level here. And on the classic controller, they replace the painted orange ring with these orange LEDs that move wherever you move the controller. Game developers can also control how these LEDs light up. They could light up and show where you should go, or indicate health levels, or energy levels. Wow! It comes with some free games right out of the box. The Atari Vault is a great collection of Atari games from the 2600 and the arcade. Antstream Arcade is a video game streaming service that is free with ads, or you can pay $40 a year for adless video game streaming. As of this video, the $40 a year price is a limited deal for the Atari VCS. Antstream Arcade has a lot of retro games that were made originally for a variety of things. The arcade, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, Amiga, Commodore 64, and more. The Atari store is where all the games are available to purchase and download. The Atari VCS is a digital only console, so you have to have a, uh, access to an internet connection to purchase and download your games. Most of the games vary between $5 and $20 in price, and it shows what controllers they're compatible with, which is pretty cool in case you don't have both controller types or you're looking to buy one for that spectacular joystick. You can browse the web with the Chrome app or install any streaming apps like Netflix, Hulu, YouTube. You know what I mean. Instead of needing to use a controller to browse Chrome or a streaming app, you can use a mouse or a keyboard, or even more convenient in my opinion, you can use the VCS companion app on your phone. You can switch to PC mode by turning on the Atari VCS with a bootable USB device with the operating system of your desire. With PC mode, you can play computer games or any computer tasks from the comfort of your couch. The Atari VCS companion app won't work in PC mode, so if you wish to remain keyboardless or mouseless, you could use an app like Remote Mouse to move your cursor and type. I should also note that the Atari VCS was not really made to play new PC games with high-end graphics. It might still be possible to play them though with reduced graphic settings. There are hardware changes you can do too to help with the performance of computer gaming and the Atari VCS overall. Being a console PC hybrid, they made it easy to see and touch its insides. You can install bigger sized RAM cards and an M.2 solid state drive. You can also access and change the BIOS settings. 
Even though this is definitely geared around retro and indie games, if you still wish you could play something new and demanding like Cyberpunk 2077, guess what? Good news, you can. As long as you have good internet speeds. If so, launch the Chrome app, purchase a game through Google Stadia, and you can stream the game to your Atari VCS. Put on your seatbelts. This is not your normal video game console experience. Now I'm going to talk about why I think the Atari VCS is cool. For starters, everything I just said I think is cool, so there's that. I played a few of the big newer games on PlayStation 4, but I found myself playing games like this the most. So with the Atari VCS being part of the next wave of consoles, and it's specifically going for games that look like this... It was a no-brainer for me. I love retro and indie games. I like the artistic chances they take, and in my experience, they challenge my mind and reaction time more. So, something designed to be a home for these games. I like how you can use Antstream Arcade on it and play all these classic games and get a global high score. When I was a kid, if I got a high score on a Sega Genesis game, it meant diddly squat. But now when I play a game I played as a kid, like Dino Land, it actually means something. And it goes on a leaderboard for everyone to see. You see that? That's me. You can't come close. Come and get me. Outside of the Atari VCS games, I have a stockpile of PC games I want to play. The Mist Collection, the Monkey Island games... Oh, isn't that cute? Starcraft, Portal... The idea that I can flip back and forth between the Atari VCS games and, the, and my Steam collection... That was a big thing for me. Selling point, really. As a PC, it takes up way less space than your average PC. I like how you don't have to pay an extra fee to play games online. And I like the idea of playing brand new games on the classic joystick controller. Congratulations, you have finished my Atari video part one, where I explain what the Atari VCS is and why I like it. Now, continue on to part two, where I talk about negative misconceptions and moot points I've heard.